Good morning. Welcome to the third lecture of this week for the ongoing course on understanding and reducing greenhouse gas emissions and we are focusing on scope 1 and 2 reduction through building design and construction. In this week we are looking at different examples of uh, different sectors and different types of companies and trying to understand where their emissions are coming from and how building design and construction is responsible for the emissions and what we can do to reduce them. Today in the third lecture of this week where we are seeing examples we are looking at understanding the emissions of fuel supply companies. So quickly going over what we have done yesterday we looked at the typical colleges, university campuses and the emissions coming from them and we realized that the significant amount of emissions coming in a university campus especially the scope 2 is actually coming from the usage of buildings. Today we are going to see where the emissions scope 1, 2 and 3 are coming from petroleum companies especially the companies which are selling oil. So we will look at the overall value chain for oil and gas companies and we will see where uh, if we are looking at the retail specifically where the companies are involved in selling the petroleum product, so where their emissions are coming from. So understanding the, the entire value chain and then looking specifically at the retail within this value chain and then looking at the case study of one of the published uh, reports which is for shell group of companies. Now if we look at the oil and gas industry, the overall value chain and the greenhouse gas emissions associated with them. So we primarily see that there are four different parts the activities, broad activities. The first one that is uh, there is extraction and production of this fuel. So extracting it, uh, producing it, uh, not refine, we are not talking about refining there but basically extracting from the natural resources. This has significant amount of greenhouse gas emissions associated with, uh, with it. Once it has been extracted, it is first sent to, so this is storage, transportation and distribution. It is transported to a storage facility or to a distribution network. So this is storage, transportation and distribution one. So the crude product, if it is to be processed, if it is to be refined, will go and be stored in storage facilities which will then go to the refinery units. So there is a refining and then it goes back to the storage units, separate storage units where the refined product will be stored. From the storage units, the refined product is then sold in retail. Again, it is transported, sent to different retail stores from where they reach the consumers. So different consumers will take that product, they will consume it. They could be general public, they could be specific sectors such as aviation or specific industry. So these are the retail marketing that we are talking about. So this is sent to the consumers, so not necessarily retail, it could be institutional sale as well. And then they are sent to the end user. Uh, sometimes there are some speciality operations, for example, there are uh, research uh, units for petrochemical, there could be minerals and mining, there could be carbon capture and storage, there could be sequestration for that. So there, uh, there, they could directly be going for energy generation. So all these are uh, the speciality operations and they will also be included as part of the value chain where they are going directly. So these are the four different components of this oil and gas uh, industry, greenhouse gas emissions. What we are focusing here is this retail and marketing where it uses, it reaches the end user. Now if we look at the, the different activities that are going to go in scope 3. Now if we look at this particular value chain, the entire value chain of uh, oil and gas industry GHG emissions first before going to the different categories that come in scope 3. We have to understand that maximum percentage of emissions in an oil and gas industry value chain is actually coming from the usage of product itself. From 
this entire process this entire process we are actually not accruing as much of emission as is accrued from the usage of the product itself and that is not under the direct scope of the company. Now the company has produced petrol I can use it in a less efficient car or a more efficient car but overall the amount of fuel that is burnt in either of the cars will remain the same and the emission that is generated from it will be beyond the scope of this petroleum company this energy this oil and gas producing company. So, this is what we are looking at this this entire thing is scope 3 downstream and not under the control. So, maximum amount of emissions are generated from scope 3 and that is why we would find that very few of the oil and gas companies are taking control of the scope 3 emissions because it is actually very difficult and it is very wide spread the user base is very very wide with little or almost no control from the oil and gas industry. But what is under the control of oil and gas industry and they themselves how much of the emissions are they generating under scope 1 and 2 is under their control and that is what we are going to see. But before that if we look at the different categories of scope 3 emission which is significantly large for a for a fuel company. So, there are 15 categories that have been uh, defined by WRI or WBCST in 2011. So, the first category is that of purchase goods and services which implies the cradle to gate emissions from extraction, production and transport of goods and services which are not included in the categories 2 to 8 here. So, this is what we are talking about for all purchase goods and services. Now, in these categories we are talking about second is capital goods, fuel and energy, upstream transportation and distribution. Then we also have downstream transportation and distribution as a separate category, waste generated during operations. In operations, we have business travel as we have seen for all other companies, the employee commuting, the upstream leased assets. This is again a significant contributor to emission and it is a large percentage because when we are talking about retail sale of petroleum as a product, one is that we have to understand that there is a huge chain of retail distribution of petroleum as a product and if we saw when we uh, uh, day before yesterday in the first lecture of this day, week when we were looking at the transport sector emissions we saw that of 28% uh, of the emissions coming from transport 20% out of this 28% is coming from road transport and largely it is uh, user driven individual user driven. So, it is a large base where the petroleum product is going to be used and to reach to that end there are a lot of leased assets. So, there are upstream leased assets and also there are downstream leased assets. The petrol stations are all downstream leased assets where the product selling is happening. Upstream leased assets are where the storage and other things are happening. So, this is what we are talking about as scope 3 uh, activities. Then we also have processing of sold products. So, sometimes the enhanced product is being sold use of sold products which is the most significant part where direct use phase emissions of the end use of goods and services which are sold by the company is happening. So, this is the most significant contributor to the emissions in this entire value chain. Then we also have end of life treatment of sold products some of them not all for uh, this particular scenario then we have franchises and investments. So, these are the 15 categories of scope 3 emissions that we are looking at when we are looking at this entire value chain and if we see again as we had done in the previous week the way we were understanding there are different types of companies that are involved. So, I uh, showed you the different 
activities that are happening not the detailed list of activities but broadly so there is extraction there is refining there is storage and transportation there are service stations there are uh, which are actually the retail outlets so these are the different companies uh, uh, which are involved in the value chain there are many more but uh, if you look at these five where each of this emission source is going to be considered as scope 1 or 2. So, if we look at the product use, so product use is not scope 1 or 2 for any of these companies which are part of the value chain for oil and gas company, it is going to be scope 3 and if we look at this, this is category 11 which is actually the use of sold products which I had highlighted here. So, this is the use of products which is going to be there, but it is all in category uh, in scope 3 category 11 and from others we can see that they will continue to fall under scope 1, 2 or 3 depending upon which company is it. For example, extraction and production and refining operations are going to be scope 1 and 2 for the extraction company and refining company depending upon the process that is uh, adopted, but these two are going to remain scope 1 and 2 for these. If we are talking about the external distribution which is uh, purchased by the company, again this is going to be scope 3 because there is no direct consumption of this product by the company, it is being purchased and sold. So, in this process the direct emissions are only which are accruing from the transportation of the product, but not for the from the consumption of the product that is why we will see that it is again coming under the scope 3. So, this is scope 3 downstream emissions. So, very clearly we can see that the primary emissions the scope 1 and 2 emissions are largely coming from the upstream activities which is from extraction till the distribution of the product. After that it is all scope 3 for this uh, oil and gas companies. If we look at the large players, so we will see again what I have been trying to explain here is that there is for different companies there is uh, this uh, uh, report which has been published in 2022 and uh, from there we can clearly see that the scope 1 and 2 emissions for different uh, oil and gas sector companies the scope 1 and 2 is significantly small, but the scope 3 is way larger. So, probably less than one tenth of the total emissions for each company is coming under the scope 1 and 2, which is insignificant in comparison to the total and we clearly know that the major emissions are coming from the use of the product that are selling. So, we understand that petroleum itself as a product is going to cause emissions and the collective responsibility is like a shared responsibility. So, how are my people commuting if I am a university and if my people are commuting using uh, petrol or diesel cars. So, it will still be scope 3 for me, but for the petrol company also it is scope 3 for the environment it is emission that is what we are talking about here. Let us come back to the petroleum industry and if we look at the retail services, if we look at the retail activity of this uh, entire value chain, we are looking at distribution of the product petroleum. So, if we look at the distribution and selling of this product petroleum product, then we see that the emissions are actually coming from the leased assets. So, they could be assets leased by the company from others. So, they could be uh, buildings, they could be petrol stations, they could be assets owned by the company and leased to the others. They could also be the transportation system, the distribution uh, uh, appliances and fleet of vehicles which are distributing the product from one uh, point to the other. Uh, there could be franchises a lot of petrol stations we would see that they are uh, franchisees, some of them could be uh, company owned and operated while a lot of them are often franchisees where the, the franchisee is licensed to sell the goods, the product of the company, but it is 
operated by the, the franchisee itself. So, there the company has some control, so not 100 percent control all the time. Sometimes it may have more control, but again if you remember the initial discussions we have been having about uh, GAG emissions, there we saw that the company if it has financial control, equity or financial control or operational control over the franchises or the facility, there also it will be counted as emission of the company itself. So, we are talking about the franchisees, we are talking about the downstream transportation and distribution that includes retail and storage for both. So, these are all the activities which are going to result in emissions only during the, uh, the retail and transportation, the downstream uh, activities for petroleum company. Now, of all these emissions which are happening in the downstream and some in the upstream also from the leased assets, we see that primarily they are coming, the emissions for the petroleum company are again coming from the real estate, the internal real estate and asset management systems. So, we are seeing the maximum emissions resulting from the operations of the company itself from the leased buildings largely from the floor space, the conditioning which is going to be in the floor space. So, there could be retail stores, there could be operations of these uh, retail stations and the energy that is going to go in operations of these stores is the emission that we are talking about as scope 1 and also scope 2. So, sometimes they are directly running on the on uh, conventional fuel, a lot of times they are taking electricity. So, again even for oil and gas company the emissions, the direct emissions if we are talking about only the retail sector, they are coming from buildings, the real estate assets that are either leased or owned. So, let us look at a case study of shell group of companies and uh, the company is committed to reduce its scope 1 and 2 emissions by 50 percent. By, that is by 2030 compared to the 2016 levels and 100 percent by 2050. Now, that is again in scope 1 and 2. So, we are largely looking at for this company, they are looking at the operational control emissions. So, emissions which are under the operational control and there if we see that the primary emission is going to accrue from the real estate assets, the leased assets or the owned assets that the company has throughout its uh, geographic uh, presence. If we see this, the performance of this company, we would see that compared to 2016 baseline that they have uh, taken for themselves, they have been able to reduce it significantly within this uh, span of uh, 5 years. And here again as we see that there are certain reductions that are uh, accrued or calculated from the sequestration facilities which are also there. So, the emissions from one set of facilities are offset by the carbon, ca carbon capture and sequestration facilities elsewhere. So, that is also a method by which we can reduce the emissions, the overall the net zero emission status can be achieved by because in some cases we will not be able to uh, offset the emissions totally, especially for example, if you are talking about the extraction company. So, the scope 1 emissions for the extraction, extraction company or maybe the scope 1 emissions for the refining company, they cannot be completely offset, but they can be there can be carbon capture and sequestration elsewhere. So, the equivalent amount of emissions that are released from their facility can be captured elsewhere and the net will become 0. So, that is also something that we can look at besides reducing the emissions itself by managing the assets, the real estate assets or other operational uh, processes and activities more efficiently. I hope with this we have been able to understand the emissions that are accruing from the retail sale of uh, the fuel companies and the importance of building design and construction 
for reducing the emissions here. We will look at the specific solutions of how to reduce the emissions through building design and construction in the coming week. In this week, we are only going to see the examples. So, thank you very much for being with me here today. See you with another example tomorrow that is the fourth lecture of this week. Thank you and bye-bye.